Hello, and welcome to the second episode of George's Paleontology. We're going to be finishing up the Paleozoic on this second episode. But before I do that, I want to break down George's ge geographical settings. Georgia is broken down into at least five different geographical settings, and each geographical setting is where we find fossils. So I have a cutout of the state of Georgia here. And in, those, and in this cutout, we have these five different places, uh, these geographical locations, and where we find fossils in the state of Georgia. So our first episode was in the Appalachian Plateau in the Valley of the Ridge region in northwest Georgia. And this is where we and this is where we will continue our journey in the Paleozoic in the Valley of the Ridge in Appalachian Plateau. Our second region is the Piedmont and Blue Ridge region. And this is where I live. Um, I should also mention that the Appalachian Plateau in the Valley of the Ridge in the Valley of the Ridge region is where we find our Cambrian and Ordovician fossils. So our oldest fossils is found in the northwest uh, region of Georgia right above the uh, Tennessee Georgia borderline. The uh, Piedmont and Blue Ridge region is where we find some of the oldest rocks. Um, these rocks are do not contain any fossils. Um, these are rocks that are composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks that are very very old and don't contain any fossils. Now they probably did originate from sediment millions and billions of years ago but um, sadly we don't have any fossils that are recorded in the Blue Ridge and Piedmont region of Georgia. Um, our, our third episode is where we're going to be focusing on here near the fall line. The fall line is actually where we find our, some of our coastal sediments. And this is where our late Cretaceous fossils are found, including dinosaur fossils. So on our third episode of Georgia's paleontology, we're going to be focusing on the fall line region of Georgia. And then above and then below the fall line is our coastal plain region. And our coastal plain region is where we're going to be focusing on the Cenozoic fossils, so the, the youngest fossils of the state. So our marine... Uh, mainly marine, but also vertebrate fossils in the coastal plain region. So the fossils in the first episode we talked about were the Cambrian fossils and the Ordovician and the Ordovician fossils. Now we start to really transition into other geological periods um, from the Paleozoic, finishing out that particular era in geologic history. Now we don't have every single period represented in Georgia. Um, there are different gaps and missing and missing pieces of the history that really tells Georgia's history. Um, so the first episode we talked about the Cambrian and we talked about the Ordovician. Now the fossils that we have in the Silurian period, which goes back at least 420 million years ago, um, we don't have any fossils of that time period. There's a rock unit in Georgia called the Red Mountain Formation. And this is composed of sandstones and mudstones that are composed of hematite, a red iron rich mineral. And we don't have any fossils from that region, sadly. Um, as we go, as we transition into the Devonian period, we actually start to see very different types of rocks, um, chertz and sandstones and mudstones that are that uh, some of the rocks are composed of. And I should mention that all of these rock units and where we find those fossils are compo are found in northwest Georgia, same the same region where we found the fossils and when we talked about in our first episode. So the fossils we don't have any Devonian fossils, sadly. All we do have are rocks, um, what we call the Aramuchi, the Aramuchi chert is one rock unit that we do have, which is, compo which is composed of chert. We also, have, we also have the Chattanooga Shale, which represents an anoxic environment during the late Devonian period, about 380 million years ago. And this represents a stagnant ocean, um, ocean that wasn't lacking any oxygen. And this is where we don't actually find fossils, that fossils are not represented in Georgia at the time. Now, when we get into the Carboniferous, we start to see our fossil assemblages coming back. Um, in North America, the Carboniferous is broken up into two parts. The lower portion of the Carboniferous is called the Mississippian, and the upper portion of the Carboniferous is called the Pennsylvanian. During this time, Georgia was covered under a shallow ocean, and it was, and it was depositing sandstones and other types of rocks, mainly limestones during that time. We find a very high abundance of carbonates, mainly limestones and, sometimes, and some duller stones from this time period. And we have an abundance of fossils from this time period. A lot of the fossils from Georgia um, come from Dalton counties. We also find them in Floyd County as well, up in northwest Georgia, along the Tennessee-Georgia borderline as well. And the fossils that are composed of are things called crinoids. In fact, the Mississippian or the lower portion of the Carboniferous is known as the dawn of crinoids because this is where we actually start to see a very high abundance of crinoid fossils. 
crinoids were the first stock crinoids really first appeared in the Ordovician. But we really start to see an abundance of crinoids when we transfer and when we transition into the Carboniferous of the lower portion of the Carboniferous period. So these are crinoids. Um, crinoids are echinoderms, they're stalked echinoderms. And this is a section of crinoidal limestone. And this is what the Mississippian period of the Carboniferous is known for. It's very famous for a lot of these carbonate limestones with abundance of crinoids within them. And this particular specimen comes from the Fort Payne Formation, which is from uh, Tennessee. Um, this particular specimen is from Tennessee, but the Fort Payne is also recognized in Georgia as well. And we also find crinoids represented in that rock unit as well. And these are just broken up crinoids. Um, this is what a crinoid looks like when it was living in life. So it would have been a stalk like this. They would have had a long stalk attached to the bottom of an ocean, attached to the bottom of the seabed. And they would have had these arms to grasp on to, uh, to pray and sway through the water column. Um, typically what you'll find are the individual stems. Um, when these animals die, their exoskeletons break apart and the fossils become very disarticulated when you find them. So the stuff that you may find mostly are the stems. And this is a crinoid stem from Dalton County, Georgia, in the in northwest section of Georgia. And this is a crinoid stem. And we have a lot of these that are found in Georgia. Um, typically what you'll find are just the stems themselves. But if you're lucky, you may find the head, or what we call the calyx, of these crinoids. Um, this particular specimen doesn't come from Georgia. It comes from a rock unit called the Monego Limestone, which is represented in Georgia. But this particular specimen comes from North Alabama in Huntsville. And this is what a crinoid calyx looks like. So it has these arm appendages here. It would have had these tiny little hair-like substances on this arm called pinules. And sometimes they can be preserved in, these, in this limestone. So this is a crinoid calyx here. This kind of gives you an example of what some of the, the calyxes or some of the heads would have looked like on these crinoids. So we find a very, very high abundance of crinoid fossils. But we don't just find crinoids. We find another echinoderm called a blastoid. And blastoids are really interesting fossils. They're related to crinoids, and they're also echinoderms as well. But they kind of look like a nut, if you kind of look at them uh, head on here. Um, they would have had five pole symmetry, like most echinoderms have. But this is what we call a pentramides, and this is found in a rock unit up in northwest Alabama, I mean, up in northwest Georgia, sorry, up in northwest Georgia, called the Floyd Shale. And this particular specimen, it's a little bit badly eroded, but you can kind of see what a blastoid would have looked like. Um, this is the calyx, the head of this blastoid here, and this is what a common fossil that you'll typically find um, in the rocks of the Mississippian period of the Carboniferous. And blastoids would have looked like this in life. So they, would have, so they would have looked like this in life. They would have had a very similar type of anatomy, that of a crinoid. So they would have been attached to it with a small stalk, and they would have had arms to grasp on the prey with uh, what we call a hold fast to hook itself to the bottom of the seabed. The crinoids and blastoids were very common during the Carboniferous period. But we don't just find those as well. We find other fossils. Um, we start to see an increase of a brachiopod called sporiferids. And this is a group that really had its, had its chance to, to really diversify in the, in the um, uh, Ordovician. But we start to see a high diversification of the, the, the sporiferid brachiopods in the Mississippian. And this is a, a sporiferid brachiopod found in northwest Georgia and the Fort Payne Formation. And this is a very interesting one. This one is called Sporifera Logani. And this one also comes from Northwest Georgia. We find horn corals as well. I mentioned we, we found horn corals when we were looking at the fossils from um, the Ordovician period, but we also find a high abundance of horn corals. This one comes from Dalton County. And this is also a horn coral. This is about 340 million years old from the lower portion of the Carboniferous. And horn corals were, came in two different, uh, two different groups. This is a rugos coral, or a horn coral. And they were very abundant during this time as well. We also find another fossil. We talked about bryozoans, but we talked about the Ordovician period. And bryozoans really diversified, just like the crinoids, once we get into the upper portion, in the lower portion of the Carboniferous, they definitely bloom during this time. And the ones that you'll typically find, or the most famous one, is this particular bryozoan. Um, this one is called Archimedes. 
and Archimedes kind of looks like a screw. And this is where it gets its name from. And this is a what we call an Archimedes bryozoan. And this one is found in North Alabama, but fossils of this particular bryozoan can be found in Georgia. And the, the, the main axis of the bryozoan would have been attached called a, a fan-like bryozoan called a finastella. So that right there is a, called a finastella bryozoan. And they would have been very abundant during the, the Mississippian period, but other fossils from this particular bryozoan can be also found in Georgia as well. So we find a lot of different marine fossils in Georgia during the lower portion of the Carboniferous. But the, or but the upper portion Carboniferous saw a rise in foliage. It saw a rise in coal. And that's exactly where Carboniferous, the, the, the actual time period itself, gets its name from. From the high abundance of coal. And in that, we find a lot of plant fossils. In fact, we find a lot of plant fossils during the Carboniferous period as a whole. Even in the, car even in the lower portion of the Carboniferous. But the Pennsylvanian, the upper portion of the Carboniferous, is where we actually do start to see a high abundance of plant fossils. And we do have that record of the foliage from the Pennsylvanian period that is represented here in Georgia. And near, the, near what we call the Lookout Mountain site, um, that's near the Tennessee-Georgia borderline, we do find plant fossils. So this is a slab of little tiny plant material of the foliage that would have existed during that time when Georgia was under a uh, covered under a sh uh, under a swamp like environment close to the delta type of environment depositing sandstones and depositing coals and shales that would have eventually turned into coal over time and these are some of the plant fossils found in Walker County in the what we call the Durham mines in fact, Durham was actually a famous city, a famous site in Georgia that would have actually had a large abundance of coal mines. But that coal mine didn't just produce coal, but it produces plant fossils as well. And many different people can go up to that section in Walker County and collect plant fossils from that site, which I've done myself. Uh, we find another abundance of different types of ferns. So this is a fern fossil from Durham County, from Walker County, Georgia. We also find impressions of these scale-like impressions of plants. And this is what we call lepidodendron. So these are little uh, pieces of a large scale tree that would have been on the edges of these ancient 300 million year old swamps um, during that time when Georgia was under a swamp-like environment. And you would have found these. This is what we call lepidodendron. lepidodendron. And they're called scale trees for a reason because the fossils themselves look like the, the, uh, the scales of a lizard or a snake. And they would have lived on the edge of Georgia, of the swamps of Georgia. And I think of the Okefenokee today, that that's probably a good analog of what these Carboniferous swamps would have looked like 300 million years ago. And this is what a lepidodendron tree, the, the, a lycopod is what it's called, um, looks like in life. And you can find some of the leaves from the Lepidodendron, but the most common and more famous piece of this fossil is the actual bark. And these trees can actually grow up to about 100 feet tall on the edges of these swamps. So they're pretty tall. And um, we find a lot of these different fossils. Um, these are just pieces, but um, almost long uh, trunks can be found of these particular fossils. And they're very famous um, in places in North Alabama, but we do have record of them from Georgia as well. Close to Lookout Mountain, um, Georgia was also covered under a, like a, a swamp-like environment, but we have tidal flags that sometimes come and go during that time. And those tidal flags uh, would have actually had trace fossils, and we find worm burrows and things like that. But close to that, we actually do find reptile and amphibian tracks. And Lookout Mountain, close to the Tennessee-Georgia borderline, has that. The more famous site called the Stephen C. Minkin Fossil Site in uh, Jasper County, Alabama, is really famous for its reptile and amphibian trackways. But Georgia does have a section um, that is similar in age uh, of the material that's found in Alabama that does have amphibian and reptile tracks. And this particular specimen doesn't come from Georgia, even though that we do have reptile and amphibian tracks from uh, the same period. But this is a famous um, site in Alabama called the Stephen C. Minkin Fossil Site that preserves ancient uh, trackways from not only just reptiles and amphibians but insects and fish and things of that nature. But this, the more famous fossils themselves are what people are looking out for are the reptile and amphibian tracks and these are uh, possible reptile or amphibian tracks um, from what we call a rock unit called the Pottsville Formation. 
And the plant fossils that I showed you from the Georgia section comes from a rock unit called the Crab Orchard Mountain Formation. And it's very similar in age to the rocks that come from, Al from uh, North Alabama from the Pottsville Formation. And we do find little tiny reptile tracks here in Northwest Georgia um, when Alabama was covered, and when Alabama and Georgia was covered under a, a swamp-like environment where those mud flats would have been exposed would have left those, where reptiles would have left their tracks and things of that nature in the soft sediment and then turning into a fossil over time. So we have a lot of things represented in Georgia. We have the upper portion of the Carboniferous that has its plant fossils and its trace fossils. And we also have the lower portion of the Carboniferous that has its abundant of marine shelly fossils like the brachiopods, um, the crinoids, and the bryozoans. We find all of that up in the northwest section of Georgia near the Tennessee-Georgia borderline. And that's actually some of my research. I do a lot of research in the Ordovician and in the Cambrian, but also wanting to learn more and find more in the fossils that are found in the upper portion of the Carboniferous as well as the lower portion. So that's where some of my research is um, looking, is looking for fossils in those in that particular one section in Northwest Georgia, what we call the Appalachian Plateau and the Valley of the Ridge region. On our third episode, we're gonna be talking about the fall line section. So we're gonna be getting into the Mesozoic era um, I should mention that we don't have Permian fossils from this time. Um, the Permian is where we find the biggest mass extinction in Earth's history about 245 million years ago. And sadly, we don't have any fossils represented from the Permian period in Georgia. But we do have a good understanding of some of the animals that lived here during the age of dinosaurs, mainly from the late Cretaceous period. And I'll get to that in our third episode.